and I've read that fake news is one of the words of the year, but what I'm curious about really is whether or not there's anything new about fake news. In many ways, no. The term became particularly popular, I think, about a year, year and a half ago. Initially, it was specifically looking at misinformation yeah. that was spread online. Yeah. But of course, you know, propaganda has gone, yeah. goes back yeah. years and years. All media has a bias or, some, yeah. or at least takes a perspective on something yeah. and often that can shade into bias. So is that yeah. fake or is that not? Yeah. I think the thing that's changed particularly is that technology and the way that uh, information is shared, specifically on social media, has altered the media landscape so much that intensified the possibility of false stories or particularly partisan stories yeah. getting shared. I mean, what is it about social media that makes it a bit more invidious, the influence of fake news, and perhaps we have with issues such as spin or propaganda, which I think we're perhaps more comfortable with thinking about how to combat? I, I expect it's a number of things. One, it's the, the reach, you know, so Facebook has, what, two billion yeah. users yeah. now? Yeah. 70 years ago, yeah. that was the entire population of the world. Yeah, yeah. It's not centralised, mm. you know, anyone can put up their own websites. It's so all these sorts of things. And then it's, it's social yeah. as opposed to looked after by a particular authority. Yeah. So I suppose in the way it's consumed, it's that less formal way of consuming the media that yeah. puts people kind of off their guard, would you say, in terms of being a bit more critical about what they're reading? I suppose if you read something in a newspaper, you might be aware of the fact that the newspaper's going to have a particular ideological position. Yes. But when something comes through on your social media feed, perhaps you're, you're not as acutely aware of the fact that this uh, might have a particular angle or that it might not be a reliable source. There's that, and everything's flattened out on social yeah. media, so you're getting news about particular things uh, next to yeah, pictures family of cats. pictures of cats. <laughs> I was trying to look for another example, but yes. Yes, as you say, it's shared by a friend, yeah. so there's already a social aspect to it. Yeah. And also, I think, because of the way it's shared on social media, it's sort of headlines are so much more yeah. important. And people often share uh, articles just by reading the headline and without even reading it. So it's kind of easier to kind of sustain something that's perhaps misleading with such a short amount yeah. of information that perhaps yes. would unravel otherwise. Yeah. And it can and it, 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 it can spread very, fa very yeah. fast, very widely, yeah. um, and there's no editorial control over it. Yeah. One thing that occurs to me, I mean, isn't the, the kind of concern Concerns around fake news, arguably just the mainstream media carping on about the fact that they're losing market share. I mean, what is there to be scared of by fake news? I mean, what, what should we be anxious about it? The impact it has is very difficult to measure. Yeah. To what extent actual fake stories have had an impact on things. But then there's this other issue that fake news has become a term that people use when they disagree with something in the news, yeah. and particularly politicians. Yeah, so and it's just a way of closing down debate, really. It's a way yeah. of closing down debate. Yeah. It's a way of saying, I, well, not that I disagree with this, it's undermining the yeah. validity of someone's, uh, and that changes the, the, the relationship we have with news generally, yeah. and with information and what, what we trust and so yeah. forth. So I suppose, so the mainstream media would argue that for a democracy to function, we need the free flow of ideas to be able yeah. to hold our, uh, those in authority over us to account. Exactly. If we start to to, as you say, muddy the waters by suggesting that anything that's unpalatable to, uh, unpalatable to our own worldview is fake news and therefore not worth engaging yes. with it, then where, where do we have this environment where we can actually exactly. hear views that might change our mind? Because in a way, I mean, some people talk about social media is, is you end up in a bubble whereby you're um, having your own particular opinions reinforced. I think, yeah, I, again, I think it's a new, there's a nuance around this. Filter bubbles, yeah. as they're called, a result of the way that the technology is likely to feed you stories and uh, opinions that you're, you've shown in the past that you're interested in, and thus the chances are that you're just going to get things you already agree with are going to, you're going to be bounced back to you. Because yeah. what, what I think is particularly concerning is when research has been done to where a lot of these fake news stories are uh, originating from, some of them can be traced back to uh, Russia. And so there's this concern that there is kind of a concerted effort for foreign state to undermine the democratic functioning of, of, of other states. I mean, you could argue there's, you know, that's been going on since the time immemorial. We've seen that with pro propaganda, certainly yeah. in the Second World War, with characters like Lord Haw Haw. But, you know, is this something that we need to, to, to be more uh, worried about? If it's coming from uh, a foreign power, perhaps we should be more concerned than we are about it. I think it's, in many ways, it's a typical case of the new, getting getting to grips with how people are using new technology uh, and the imp impact it has. And as you say, you know, the same sorts of things have happened in the past. Yeah. Uh, uh, in overt ways and yeah. in less overt ways. Yeah. And so, in those terms, yes, if, if it's overtly 
being used by a foreign state as a propaganda weapon, which the yeah. suggestion is it is, then yes, it obviously needs to... So whose responsibility is it to do something about it? I mean, you could argue, you know, some people call for more regulation of, yes. of social media companies. Other people might put the onus on the individuals who are consuming it to be a little bit more critical, a little bit more circumspect about what they're reading. And even institutions like ours have a role in that, I suppose. Yeah. Is it the case that, you know, we're just not used to the, the, the technologies that we're using now and that we haven't evolved a way to handle them in the way that we have uh, other technologies? My feeling is yes not least because these technologies are constantly changing. Yeah. Following the elections and when fake news as a, as a modern notion suddenly became such a big topic, a lot of the criticism was that Facebook, other social media sites, needed some sort of regulation. But there, there are, are problems, problems yeah. Problems I mean, because yes. the concern I'd have with extra regulation really is that there can be some unintended consequences yeah. of things like that. If we are to have a genuine democracy where people can access information and make their own minds up, that's all part of the system that helps us keep our government to account. So that the whole system, I think, does rely on a free play of ideas. Yeah. The situation is different now because of the technology, and perhaps re regulation is required. Two points to it, I think. One of the things is that, so back to this idea that Facebook, it's one company yeah. who has the possibility to, in effect, manipulate how yeah. people see the world. Yeah. So that would be an argument for possibly some states yeah. oversight of that. But the other thing that you mentioned, the technology is, is, firstly, it's new generally, and secondly, it's changing all the time. And a lot of it's either, some of it's secretive, you know, how the algorithms work yeah. are actually secretive. Yeah getting to grips with that is more than just someone telling you. Mm. You need some sort of education. So I think education is an, uh, an important, a uh, hugely important part of that. Ultimately, you want people to be able to make informed decisions, but you can't do that unless you have an, an understanding of yeah. how the information is being circulated. But I do think, this is the point I've made elsewhere, that um, universities are in a very good position to teach this sort of stuff because we already teach it. Yeah in terms of academic skills, you yeah. know, how you verify information yeah. that you're putting in an essay or something mm. like that. Mm. Well, it's the same thing, mm. but in society in general. So I suppose it's like many things, it's a combination of different factors. But I would argue that the state does have a role to play, and I think some people can overplay the card of uh, avoiding uh, state regulation of the media, because we do have it to, certain ex to yeah. a certain extent, because we have specific rules around broadcasting that don't apply to uh, broadcasting on a social media platform. Yes. Maybe we need to think again about revisiting that. And of course, the law is as it is, will stop. Uh, there are ways in which legally there are remedies for someone knowingly spreading false information about someone that would have the effect of damaging their character. But it's just getting that, that balance. Yes. And the general context of this, coming back to the idea that fake news has sort of almost two different meanings when you've got those in power using the term as a way of undermining news generally news media generally it makes it very difficult yeah, 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 then yeah. i mean we're talking about government uh, yeah. regulation or something but if the government themselves it, themselves are yeah. doing their best to right. muddy the waters in the That's way right. we were talking about yeah. that then comes to an, a question of ethics yeah. and it's a question of ethics of those in public life yeah. and That's uh, right the quality of leadership yeah the quality so, of leadership yeah. which is uh, which that becomes a rather more yes. problematic right. <laughs> yeah, issue, so. which, is, which is why I think that the, the term fake news has become such an interesting one, because if it was just, okay, a few people in yeah. uh, Russia yeah. putting out false stories, um, you can see, okay, that's, that's a particular thing, yeah. maybe we can work out a way to do that. Yeah. But it's opened up this whole idea of what, uh, yeah. how information circulates, how the world is mediated yeah. by media companies That's right. um, yeah. and how we as individuals and as a society uh, uh, deal with that. Yeah.